So let's continue on with part five of the gauge chart. And right now, if I refresh, you can see this is just a static uh, meter. And I don't want that. I want this needle to move along nicely, depending on the value. The value I will assign to it by putting it in here. So we're going to say a comma. And then we're going to put in here, let's say here, a uh, angle value. And we are allowed to do this in Chart.js because Chart.js gives this option here. It's just JavaScript and this is just an object. And let's say here the value should be somewhere within a range of these here. This in total is 69. So let's make it simple by saying 69 first. For one reason only is I want to expect the needle to hit the very end here and nothing less or nothing more. So it should be just exactly that specific spot. So then we're going here and remember I said previously that I would use this data later on. So now we're going to use this data because this data will be needed for here. So what I'm going to do here is just create some items here. First of all, I'm going to say a constant needle value will be equal to what exactly? Data dot data sets. And this is index zero because we only have one data set here. And then we say here a needle value. Very straightforward, nothing fancy here. So it would, it would just grab this value here specific. Or, and then what I want to do is to calculate wherever the needle needs to be, it needs to understand first of all, uh, what is the total amount here? So it will know that there, where is the exact position? So what I'm going to do here is say constant, and let me say here, uh, data total or total sum, anything you want, but I'm just going to do a total sum of the array that we're going to use. And the array that we need is in the data set index zero, because we want to grab all of this data here. So what I'm going to do now is total of data total equals data dot data sets. And then we say here index zero dot. And then we're going to put in here the data and then we do a reduce method. And the reduce method allows us to calculate the sum total of our array. So in here, what I'm going to say is for every value, and then we're going to add up the B depending on the B, if I'm not mistaken, or the A should be one of these values and the B would be the cumulative sum. Anyway, doesn't matter too much of the logic. Just follow along and you should have the expected end result. Very straightforward. So then what I want to do here is to put this function error expression. Then I'm going to say here, A will be plus B and our starting value will be zero. Very straightforward. The moment we do this, we say here console log, we should have here data total. Save that, refresh, open up developer tab, 69. All right, so this is a confirmed value now. So what I want to do now is to make sure that it understands the rotation of this. So to play around with this rotation, uh, let's see, we need to start calculating certain items here. Uh, let's see where are we going to work on this. So what we need is what we call the circumference. And to get this data, I'm going to show you first of all where we can find that circumference and then with that we need to do a calculation. So we're going to say here console log and then I'm going to say here chart.getDataSetMetaIndex0. This is a very useful tool to use. And I'm going to say here dot data and an index zero. If I save this, refresh, open up the developer tab, we get all of these arc data here. And we get many of these because of the animation of itself. However, what I want is this is the most important one. I look at the circumference here, which would eventually calculate the relative uh, radiant or circular shape of it, how far it needs to calculate. So what I'm going to do is basically this. I get here this, but this circumference is only for this specific item. But we have a full, I guess here, uh, no, I don't know what's the right term for it, but this is a 180. But the circumference is in math.pi, or I guess that would be uh, 1 pi is 3.14, right? 3.14 plus, plus, plus. So this is just a, a small part of it, like uh, maybe 1 6 or something like that. So what we want to do is, of course, to calculate whatever the rotation is. And then divide it back to its original and then calculate the total of this. So it sounds all very complicated, 
it is tricky to, to figure it out, but of course, you don't have to really figure it out. If you just follow along, you will understand exactly what I'm going to do here. So what I want to do is, based on what my needle value is, it should understand what is eventually the rotation. So what I'm going to do here is the circumference. I'm going to get the circumference. Circumference. All right. Then what I want to do is I want to divide this by the math.pi. So we are calculating then how much that is. And then once I have that, I want to again divide this. Well, let me just put that in here and give this a priority so you can start to see what's going on here. So you get a certain value here, but this is probably like a percentage or something like that. It's, it's, it's relative. However, what I want to do now is, uh, yeah, what I want to do now is get the value that is calculated based on this. That's this one here. So I need to get here the value of that specific slice. So I'm going to say data dot data sets index zero dot data index zero. And once we have this, we can then multiply this by the needle value. In reality, what I'm just doing here is, well, let's see here, you make sure that this is all correct, needle value, and then this should also calculate and prioritize. Save, refresh. All right, none. All right, that's interesting because I need to check here, uh, needle value is needle value. Do I get the, oh, that is not needle value, my, val my, my bad, it's angle value. Maybe I just call it needle value, just to make it easier. And there we are. So what really happens is, basically I'm doing this. I'm calculating first, what is the circumference, and I divide this by the math.pi. Then I know exactly how much is one radian, or one degree, or what the value is for one, one unit. I multiply, and then I will divide this by the value, and I'm, uh, uh, sorry, what I'm doing here is, it's very complicated for me as well to explain. It's, I'm calculating what is the math of pi slice here. But then I divide that based on what is the data here. So I can calculate if this is, let me double check, this should be 12 if I'm not mistaken, or 18. So the 0 0.8, what we had in calculated with the circumference is about 18. So I divide that to get the one single unit and then multiply that by 69. So is it the full circle or the full half circle in this case? That's what I'm really doing here. So that's why now I get one because one pi is 3.14 plus plus plus, but it means also it's a half circle. So this is correct. So what I need to do now is get this value. Let's say here, I can see you can say your constant, the circumference, but not really accurate circumference term. It's whatever the rotation is. We have to make sure we have all of these uh, curly braces here. We have to make sure that this here, all right, that's first. Then we have that one, maybe last, like that. All right, then what I can do here is to start to calculate the rotation. So what I want to do here now is to make a rotation, ctx.rotate. And what I'm going to rotate is the math.pi multiplied by the circumference. Say refresh. Oh, all right. As you can see here, what is happening? It calculates something, but it's not fully calculating because I need to add up probably the right starting point because it starts at the very top here. So let's say we need not only one pi, we need one and a half pi to get here. Well, let's double check. If I say one pi, it should start down. Then do one and a half pi. All right, so I have to calculate where we are. I'm mistaken here somewhere. All right, so after a quick look at my code, it makes sense. So what I'm trying to do here is, I want to say here plus 1.5 pi. However, it's still not yet uh, adding up, of course. So I want to make sure that this here gets prioritized because I want to first calculate this 1.5 value and then convert it to whatever the pi value is. So that's 3.14, we'll make a multiplier. So if I save this, refresh, now we have this working. So what I want to do now, just to cross check, let's say this is one and let's see where it goes. There we are. 
we have to pay 10. There we are. If we are halfway of that one of 69, that is 34.5. We should be in the center. All right. So that is really confirmed now. So now we have this. Next one, what we want to do is put in here a label, maybe with a percentage or something. That would be very nice. 